We're taking a look at the highlights from Eric Schwartz and Shell's column from this week. And Eric, I think with all the attention paid to the quarterbacks this year, Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees with ridiculous performances, maybe a little bit overlooked was the new era of tight ends we're seeing. I think you absolutely call it the greatest era of tight ends that we've ever seen. I mean, just statistically or otherwise. I mean, certainly in the years past, these guys were blockers. You know, they were first and second down run blockers. Now they are first, second, and third down passing weapons, mismatch guys out there. You can't put a safety on them. I think the great era of the safeties is gone. Guys like Paul Mall at the end of his career, Ed Reed, et cetera. You know, it just is amazing to see guys like Jimmy Graham and Vernon Davis, Aaron Hernandez, Rob Gronkowski, all these guys still left in the postseason making the plays they did in these postseason games. And it's just, a, I mean, the position has transformed. Like you said, they become more pass catchers. It's like NBA power forwards. You, guys, you have guys 6'6", six, 6'8", six, six, you know, playing the position. I don't know how you stop it. The 49ers defense, while they didn't totally stop Jimmy Graham and the Saints, they did play very well. And really, it comes down to one basic thing. It sounds so simple. They tackle well. Yeah, I thought for 52 or 53 of those 60 minutes, they played outstanding defense against the Saints. And you're right, there was that one missed play on that Graham 66-yard touchdown. Dante Whitner went for the ball. But other than that, their tackling was so sound and so fundamental. It's the unsexiest story in the playoffs right now, but it's absolutely a key point to their success. And Vic Fangio, their coordinator, talked about it at length after the game. He said, we are a fundamental defense. That's really important to what we do. They wrap up. Yeah, they make some big hits along the way. but. The fact that they don't let those yards after the catch, that's what the Saints are so dif dif uh, dangerous on. The screen game was wiped out in that game. Yeah, the early one to Pierre Thomas where they, not only did Thomas get hurt, but he fumbles near yes. the goal line, really changed the whole complexion of that game early on. TJ Yates, I think, filled in pretty admirably, admirably this year for the Texans. You know, got to the playoffs, they got a win. But is he a long-term solution for them? I mean, could he fill in for Matt Schaub in the future? Yeah, I think in the future, but we may go 2012 without really seeing him. You know, Matt Schaub should regain his starting spot next year. All indications are that he will get that chance. Yates isn't supposed to be in, a, in some kind of battle with him by any means. I don't think they're married to Schaub long term, so Yates may get a chance. You just got to be patient. It's got to be kind of a weird thing. He wasn't expected to play at all. Now he's got the taste of playing in him. He's probably not going to see much of the field next season except the preseason. So here's a kid that we may have to store away for a year or two before we hear him again. Such a surprise. I'm not sure they were expecting. I'm sure they weren't expecting no. him to have to play this year, but the fact that he jumped in and played pretty well has to be a big bonus for them. That's a look at the shorts and shells column for this week. You can read the whole thing at profootballweekly.com. It's never too early to start thinking about the NFL draft and Pro Football Weekly's new draft database has you covered. Check out updated player rankings for over 750 prospects and our exclusive PFW stock watch. Just go to the draft tab at profootballweekly.com.